Hey y'all, it's been a minute since I've come out with a video, but hope you're doing well. Today, we'll be talking about some games you can play during the summer. Now, I'm normally a go-to for AAA games along with some mix of indies or not well-known games, but I wanted to switch it up and just do some lesser-known games today where you can just hang at home and not have to stress too much about the gameplay and the large price tag. Some are a bit familiar, but no big AAA blockbuster titles on this list. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Townscaper. Townscaper is a creative freeform city sculptor game with no objective to the game really. From Swedish developer Ozark Stahlberg, you basically construct an island town and you just put colored blocks by placing them and removing them on an ocean. There are some limited rules where you can't place your blocks, but with the constructive method, it allows you to build things on your island like arches and stairways to how you desire. It's kind of hard to describe your setting, but you're basically out in the sea but I like this concept because it takes away from the usual grids you normally see on land settings. It's got relatively good scores all around from different critics besides the Switch edition, but it seems very relaxing and something to pick up if you're feeling you need to decompress your mind. A big plus is it's also really cheap, less than $6 and sometimes I've seen it down to $3 as well. Townscaper is for PC, Switch, Xbox, and mobile. From developer Humble Games comes Coral Island. Now there was a lot of hype to this game where we were in the crux of the pandemic, Jen and I actually backed up this game on Kickstarter because we wanted to play something similar to Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley. It raised a total of $1.6 million with over 35,000 people backing it up on the first 30 day period. But known as the resemblance of Stardew Valley on a tropical island, you control a character who goes around the city talking small talk while building a community. You work at a farm to raise crops and plant things, but you have the ability to fight monsters, sway NPCs, and clean up the environment. I've played a little bit of this game, but got somewhat distracted because it took a little while to get it released. But overall, there is great reception to Coral Island and even in 2023 Steam Awards, it got nominated for Sit Back and Relax. It's a hidden gem that costs just under $30 and a new patch and update the game regularly. It's on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Minami Lane. This game came out a few months ago and it looks super adorable. From developers Doot and Bleep Loop, Cute names, by the way. It's a management sim where you can manage shops, the people in the community, while you finish tasks and promote positivity and love. The great thing about this game is that it's about a two to four hour gameplay, which has a nice little pick me up to it if you're not looking to commit wholeheartedly to a game. And who could go wrong with tanukis, Asian foods, and cats? And really, the best thing about it is it just costs $5 and costs you less than a cup of boba. Minami Lane is just currently only on PC on Steam. AFK Journey. From Lilith Games comes AFK Journey, which was from released just last month. This was a sequel to the first game they had which was AFK Arena. And honestly, first impressions, this game has an absolutely amazing Canva art style to it. And instead of being in just one place like an arena, it has expanded over to a large world where you can join players, fight bosses, and compete with others in the game. The story is overall quite a generic one where you assemble a team being a mage and you go through a journey. You go through five major zones and there are a few quests here and there, but in order for you to unlock the sub zones, it does require you to unlock them with a residence level. You won't be able to get materials for upgrades immediately, but you'll need to go through quests in different game modes while you rank up your team. And yes, you may say this is free, but this is also a gacha game. However, just like any gacha game, you just need to spend a little bit more time on the grind in order for you to not spend any money. I never encourage anyone to have to purchase anything from gotchas, but if you are able to do so financially, so be it. Give this one a try, it's free, and what do you have to lose? The game is currently on PC and mobile. Honkai Star Rail. I've mentioned this game in a few of my other videos, but as mobile game of the year, I have to shout this one out. Made by the highly acclaimed Hoyoverse, and without really spoiling that much of the story, you play as a trailblazer who gets infused with a stellar wand, which is something like a bomb in your body. Your job really is to find what is going on with you while you try to save space. Along the way, you'll be meeting some amazing NPCs, which a lot of them you'll be able to play in-game. This game has been out for pretty much a year now, and I have to say that I love the turn-based combat. I had a handful of times where I played Genshin Impact, but I love the autoplay on many of the battles, which gives you a little bit more time to be away from your keyboard or phone so you can gain resources. This game is also free as well, but just like AFK Journey, it is also a gosh game. You can play this game for free and be resourceful with your jades, which is, is in a sense your currency to get up to 5 star characters or light cones, which are your weapons. Also, this game does take a bunch of room on your phone, so make sure to save some space if you do. But honestly, I love the art style. The story is driven and put a lot of time into it. They give you a ton of rewards to the point where you can get good teams to travel along with your journey. Honkai Star Rail is for PC and PlayStation. Spiritfarer. Spearfarer is a management sim developed and published by Thunder Lotus Games. This game came at a really crazy time during the pandemic, and I know a lot of people still play this game as of to date. You play as Stella and company with a cat, Daffodil, 
who becomes a spirit fairer where you ferry spirits of the deceased to the afterlife. Kind of a chilling thing to do, right? You basically meet the needs of spirits that come into the ship. You give them food, build them things for them on the boat. You collect materials and you build things up like gardens and other amenities to really make the spirits feel comfortable and at home. Also, characters you meet along the way will give you mini games to play for materials and in-game currency that give your characters a little bit more depth. You also have a vendor that sells your things like furniture and decorations to help your upkeep on the boat and your overall experience. This is a game that also hits very deep with Nicholas Urain, who is the creator of this game, and that the stories were told from the game were based off his own experience of loss. He wanted to create a game where he wanted to handle death that felt very personal and also being very close to his loved ones. This game seems like a roller coaster of emotions, and I really wanted to put this one on the list to really sit back and play this game during the summer. You can get Spearfare for $30, but you can actually even get it on sale for less than $8 right now, and I'm sure in the future as well. You can play it on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC, and they even have a mobile Netflix edition. And finally, we have a really underrated game that came out in September of last year, and it's called Cocoon. Developed by Geometric Interactive that came out last year, the player controls a beetle that can hop between worlds, solve puzzles, and unravel continuous mysteries in the universe. Kinda sounds like a very familiar AAA game that I've played before. You play in third-person view, and as a player, you control a small creature to navigate the entire world. You're awakened in a wasteland and discover a mysterious orb. Each of these orbs contain one of the worlds you'll be going to, allowing you to hop between them. Orbs can also be used to power machineries found around the world like lifts and platforms to get you through to other orbs. you also encounter bosses once you reach the end of the level as well. Cocoon is also very unique as it was made from previous makers of Limbo and Inside, which were some of my favorite games decades ago. He emphasized in quotes that spatial relationships between interconnected realms could be used in puzzles. It's got very good ratings all across the gaming community, and I'm not going to lie, this one actually overshadowed me because I had no idea this game came out until I start doing this video. This game seems like a perfect game to pick up with your Switch or even chill at home as I like to continuously engage and think with my brain. I can't wait to try out this one as it comes across all platforms on the Switch, PlayStation, PC, and Xbox. The game is also only $25 but it does go on sale from time to time and I've seen it as low as $18. Which games are you looking forward to playing during the summer? Any of them on the list or maybe you have one you're looking forward to playing with after you're done with school or you just want to relax after work. Comment down below and let me know and if you like the video do me a big favor and hit that like and subscribe button down below. We really appreciate the love and support and I'm Jer, one half of the Ginger Gaming Duel and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night. Bye y'all.